you a Pink Floyd fan, John Lydon? Cool, I remember that album, Relics. I loved that album. Everybody had that, because it, with the black and white cover, the, yeah. with the, um, like a big organ on, and a lot of people coloured it in. <laughs> like at school, a lot of people coloured theirs in. You, you had that oh, album, I'd be you? furious, because I'm not having anyone colouring my organ. But there you go. Right, OK. Um, I always thought that when Pink Floyd was standing at the UFO Club in London and all those clubs, yeah, yeah, that, I yeah, thought that would have yeah, been, been yeah. a great, se great time to be in London, that, I yeah, would have thought. That would have been a bit before my time, in, but I, yeah. I remember, I, I, I acknowledged and knew it was happening, but I was way too young to of be course. let in. Yeah, Me they too. had a residency at the UFO, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah, and yeah. all those folk clubs were going, like, Les Cousins and things like that. I suppose when you were mm. knocking around London in your formative years, that felt similarly exciting, and there was something happening, didn't it, I guess? Uh, or not, so much. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, most of the time I was oblivious to my surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> How are I you? Suppose, I suppose that's me Irish roots. There you go. <laughs> How are you, anyway? We, so we, so I've seen a picture of you, and you, someone said you were in a white tunic and striped trousers, a bit chef-like, but then I thought the top was slightly more dental hygienist. <laughs> well, after you've had a touch of our steak and kidney pud, you will need a <laughs> dentist. Do you have a vast wardrobe? Because you've always got some arrested outfits to hand. Well, I mean, look, I got this. It is a chef's outfit, but it, right? I, I spotted it when I was in New York, and it was on sale for $30, right. like, you know, chef outfit extras, so <laughs> yippee. I'm always, you know, capable of a good bargain. Right. So, you, so you, me clothes are fun, and they're never to be taken serious. Yeah. So do you have, do you have huge swathes of clothes at home, massive no, walking wardrobes and things? I, I wear them till they quite literally rot off my body and then replace them. That's that's the way, in it? One in, one out, really. Yeah. That is the way. Like, uh, still down to the same pair of underpants since oh, mid-80s. What a lovely thought. Beautiful. Um, and, the uh, wife uh, loves it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what the world needs now is the album. Expl explain to me this sort of um, uh, slightly arresting and disturbing dervish on the front who's holding the pill symbol in one hand and a globe in the other. Ah, that's, um, I took it from the Hopi tradition, uh, um, and, I, and I love American native art anyway, but yeah. the, the, the figure he represents, uh, the, the, the pranks, uh, the tricks, uh, I suppose in Western culture we'd have that as the clown or... Like a jester but, sort of yeah, figure, but, yeah. But these are the people, and particularly in, 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 in uh, the Hopi tradition, that uh, mock pomp and ceremony. Mm. And it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, they, their whole job is to disrupt the, um, the, the uh, celebrations and, and to bring in a sense of realism. Yeah. to things and uh, in many ways I suppose I'm one of those characters myself I, I mean I might be laughed at as a clown but everybody's listening exactly so would you say there's something of the idiot savant to all this then uh, if you can't laugh at pomp and ceremony, then you've seriously got your life wrong. Right. Let's hear, let's hear the single, Double Trouble, and then we'll talk lots more about the new record. I play that for Mike in Swansea, and Kevin Taggarty says, This double trouble, by pill, is great. I haven't heard anything this energetic and exciting for far too long. John, I mean, I, can't, I can scarcely believe it. Is it. Can it really be 17 years since Pill made an album? No, we made one just a couple of years well, back. that's what I thought, <laughs> yeah. But there was a gap in between there where uh, I was at serious war with the record labels and so I had to go off and do other things. But like, uh, now I've come oh, back. Oh, there was a couple of years back. There was the big yeah. gap before that, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, Before right. this is Pill, yeah. But yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I bought my way out of those contracts yeah. and uh, now Pill is its very own label and yeah. we're, we're up and at it. Very good. I love that song and I'm glad you played it because... Yeah. Uh, that song, that comes out of a, a row my missus and me had <laughs> over the repair of a toilet. Well, I know. It's, uh, it's quite sort of charming, really. And Domestos is domestic bliss, so it's, it's quite... I know. No, I'm looking yeah. for the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's another commercial coming up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't block the toilet with your sanitary napkins. <laughs> right, but it was like, do you involve yourself in, uh, in, in sort of domestic chores? 
Uh, well, uh, are you a shame, DIY uh, kind of guy? Yeah, listen, I am. Are because you? yeah, usually, but uh, this particular moment in time, I, I had other things to do. But yes. What I'd done is four years earlier, I installed a, a whole toilet all of my lonesome. Did you? And, yeah, That's did. impressive. And that set up the precedent, of course, that yeah. anything wrong with the loo and yeah. it's right. Johnny Poo. Here. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So you do have some plumbing <laughs> skills then. Yeah, but I mean, you know, look, I didn't, I didn't join a band to be a plumber. Well, that was what I was wondering. If you hadn't joined the band, would you have been a plumber? What else might you have no, been? I, I, marine biology would have been a fancy of mine, I, and of course, I'd have had no access to that. So, uh, a hooligan drug dealer, then, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fairly commonplace stuff. <laughs> what is the process? I'm intrigued about hearing a song like that. How would that, how would that come about? Would, would Lou and Bruce and Scott? sort of make music and you would listen and get inspiration from the music or would you start with the words how would it happen well first and foremost i view my voice as an instrument anyway but yeah we juxtaposition around i mean somebody could drop a guitar in the corner and if, if it hits the right twang you know we're all on it and go ha ha right Th that's an inspirational moment uh, that song, that, that was, uh, I, I think it actually came from something Lou was fiddling around with, but yeah. uh, in a very, very different way from what it turned out. And, and into. Yeah. Uh, we approached this album that we wanted the songs to have a sense of immediacy about them. Mm. I mean, we wanted to uh, uh, experiment in, inside solid structure. Right, right. And and there it is. So you would be in the studio with a microphone and you would kind of improvise, not necessarily words, but oh, just yeah, vocal you... sounds around the music, would you? Uh, yeah, no, I laid off the saxophone stuff, which, <laughs> you know, tends to over uh, spoil the band. So, uh, hmm. uh, no, what we do is we uh, we set everything up and, and leave it run. And wh whatever we're uh, fiddling about with, it's working out good, and we'll stop and we'll we'll work solidly on that for a bit. Uh, and, and that's why uh, the album sounds so live, because yeah. it, it is basically a live album with very few uh, alterations therein after. Right, OK. So were you, would you get thought you would have to go away and, and lock yourself away and finish the words off, would you, at some no, point? No, I'm writing at the same time. Right, OK. Yeah. Do you write quickly? Yeah. It, well, I have to, and right. I'm the only one that's able to read it backwards, yeah. too. <laughs> I, listen, I keep, I keep uh, song ideas constantly running in my head, and I uh -huh. find that to be the most comfortable place for me. If I uh, ever go to the studio with predetermined ideas, it's usually the, the most awful passion killer thing to do. Yeah. Because you, you're destroying spontaneity at that point. Yeah, yeah. Last time you were on, and you were talking about your mum and the book, and, you know, you even, by your own admission then, shed a tear. And I was quite sort of surprised that people were surprised to see that side of you. I mean, it, it, still to this day, people confuse Johnny Rotten with you, don't they? Uh, well, I suppose it's with people who get it continuously wrong. And let's face it, I've been making music... Uh, exploring many kinds of emotions now for an awful long time but if if they still haven't got me by now then mm. those are the ones that can't wait to see my backside and believe me i'm more than prepared to show it to yeah. them <laughs> okay. um, it, it, the language language is something that's very sort of important to you i was thinking about it because i remember when jarvis cocker saying you know a country to popular belief, swearing is big and it is clever and the, the enfant terrible and you sort of bookends this album you start off with a lot of swearing and you finish off with quite a lot of swearing it's still a part of the vocabulary that you use for the records, isn't it? Well, words are effective uh, tools of communication and, 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 and sentence structure is something I love and adore and I love the roll and twist of vowels and the rest yeah. of it. And uh, sometimes those words are incredibly uh, poignant and important for emphasis. Yeah. Uh, me, personally, I don't consider that there is any such concept as swear words. Every sound a human being makes, whether used appropriately or not, is is creative, beautiful, and wonderful. Yeah. This is what we have: is language. Yeah. And and and, and uh, no, you know, no institution has the right to take that away from me. And it is punctuation and emphasis, which uh, you know, jo oh, I, jokes I, I, I love as well as understood. Songs, no, well, right? I love to be understood clearly. Yeah. Well. So and particularly in, in songs, I, I pronunciate and enunciate. Well, yeah. Uh, so you recorded this in the... In you know, the there's Cots no nonces in me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you recorded this in the Cotswolds, didn't you? Are you, a, are you a countryside kind of guy? I associate you with the town, really. 
uh, we're there so that there's no distractions. It's, mm. it's, it's an amazing place. It's a barn. Is it's, it Steve it, Winwood's place? It is. Yeah. It is. And there's a man that made Shoot Out at the Fantasy Factory. Yeah, you traffic. Know. Yeah, great. You know, that, that was a great album and mm. the atmosphere. So he built this, uh, this barn and, and uh, turned it into a recording facility. And through friends, we found out about it, went down there for the previous album and now this. And mm. we love it. It, it has uh, natural acoustics that are so superb. It's solid stone walls with right. a, a ceiling, I don't know, is 80 foot up there with solid wooden beams and uh, sliding doors left and right. So you get the sheep mang at one side and uh, some kind of weird birds making cuckoo noises out of the other and us in between. Right. Yeah. Lovely. I mean, do, but, you know, do you like the countryside when you're not recording? I mean, obviously when you were doing the butter adverts, there was a bit of the sort of country squire image you were adopting there for a bit, but is that is that you in any way or do you stick to the town? No, uh, for me, anything that gets me out of the town is absolute heaven. Is it? Yeah, and, and, and I'm an happy kind of a bloke, really, anyway. I, I can settle in and enjoy the environment no matter where it is, but I particularly like country. Yeah. But I also like being out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And then I come to think of it, of course, uh, on this album there's a song called Big Blue Sky. Yes. Which is a, a, a total love of the desert. Right. Yeah, OK. Which takes us back to the little character on the front. He looks like he's in a bit of a desert there. Yeah. Did you notice he's wearing my shoes? Oh, are those your shoes? Yeah. Oh, so right. it, it is either me or he, he, he nicked them off me. Right, yes. No, it does have the flavour. When you when we're talking about the ocean, we were talking yesterday about Crosby, Stills and Nash. Did you know that when they come over here, that they uh, they come uh, they come on the you know a big ocean liner and they play a couple of concerts to kind of work their passage? Yeah. Didn't the Cure do that Did too? They? Yeah. Did they? Because the singer uh, is frightened of flying. Right. Do you fancy that cross uh, Atlantic no, crossing? No, I do not. No. I think that will be the end of my life cruise right. ship lounge band right <laughs> <laughs> with the band is it kind of important that it's, like, it, it, it's kind of you stick to the basics i don't mean that in a pejorative sense i mean you, you know it's guitar based drums is where it starts even though there are other sounds in there do you yeah. like that interplay between the small outfit is that endlessly yes, fascinating I do. There, there, there's a reason that this limited amount of instruments gravitated towards themselves way back when in in, in the history of, of pop music mm. and it, and it's still it offers you vast access to all yeah. manner of sounds and sophisticated yeah. explorations within. I mean, I'll tell you one of the things that really annoys me when I hear uh, people in other bands saying, like, oh, there's nothing that inspires them. It's like, what the hell are they on the radio or, or anywhere talking like that for? Yeah. It's it's there's so much to enjoy and, and, and the, the possibilities. Our favourite moments when we're writing songs is the mistakes. Yeah. Uh, the discordancy and the harmonics created therein. I mean, and for me in particular, that can get me free flowing in all manner of words and sentences. Well, that's what Brian Eno said. He said, uh, 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 "Honour thy mistake as a hidden intention." Well, he must be referring to the Portsmouth Sinfonia <laughs> album. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. I loved that ra that record, by the way. That was that was exceptionally. F uh, funny with the little fly on the on the cover on the on, on the conductor's uh, yeah, but, cuff. But the yeah. idea of using like people that had no sense of rhythm or connection or knowledge of music whatsoever to yeah. you know to rehash the uh, the old classics. Mm. Fantastic! I, I laughed my head off and loved that album. Yeah, me too. Yeah, great. Yeah, and Brian Eno is doing a six music lecture, so we were chuffed about that. Um, you're off on tour. Well, you, you don't to have to listen to him. You don't. Just listen to the Portsmouth Symphonia. Yeah, I know. He's an interesting guy, though. He's an interesting guy. Um, the um, no, you see, you're off on tour starting next week, I think, aren't you? Glasgow on the 18th. Yeah. Do you wake up in the morning and think, ah, oh, good gig tonight? No. Right. Usually I'm in a state of panic and fear <laughs> that I might let people down and, oh, yeah. be, and be completely awful. And, well, it, it, it's, it's been called stage fright or whatever it is, but what it, for me, I've, I've begun to, to look forward to, to that, uh, that endurance course before you yeah. finally get on the stage. Yeah. It's, uh, it's attacks of nerves, all manner of things, but what it is really is adrenaline building in your body. Yeah. And that does make you feel somewhat sick and, and then Oh, that second of release once you're on stage. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Do you get very... T a lot of people who feel that get strangely tired and think, I'm too tired to do this today. And it's almost yeah. like your body is conserving that adrenaline for the big surge to get you on there. <laughs> well, you know, you know Rambo, <laughs> me manager's next to me. Right, yeah. Just before we started this, that's exactly what I told him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is, all the, is all the outfits and the kind of... Uh, is all, has all that been a kind of a shell, something to hide behind to kind of... Are you, are you a shy retiring soul somewhere in there? Um, uh, in my, my private life, yeah, I, I, I don't see the need to run around screaming all day long. No, no. no I'm, gen I'm generally, I, I've always been shy, but, and, and so, I mean, that's the curiosity, even to myself, how I've uh, evolved into this, uh, this manic preacher. Yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> reference to the bandwidth, love. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you when, you, when you've got some time off, what do you do? A nice round of golf, crazy golf, or...? What do you do? Oh, I don't know. I've got no kind of sporting activity except watching Arsenal. While, yeah. You know, stretched yeah. out on a couch with a, a can of beer. And that's it, yeah. Yeah, well, if, if you could call that an activity. And a bit of plumbing and that's your life. Oh, Wenger needs some plumbing, that's for sure. <laughs> um, look, we're going to play The One. Tell us about, which is a song we love off the record, so we're going to play this. Tell us tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, that's um, me fondly remembering, you know, when I was between 14, 15 that way, and, and you go to the, like, the clubs or the, or the local, like, um, the social places, and uh, always wanted to, like, talk to the girls and, you know, mm. hopefully have a date. I was so inadequate and stupid and useless and and it's kind of embarrassing even to think about it until I got to grips with it in this song because it, it was me looking for love <laughs> in all the wrong places. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is the one from the uh, new Pilt album uh, which is uh, What the World Needs Now. Uh, John, lovely to spend some time with you as ever. Peace. All right, then, we'll uh, see you again soon. And uh, Pilt on tour from uh, next Friday, the 18th, at uh, the Glasgow ABC. Cheers, yeah. John. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us, mate. Cheers, mate. All the best. Bye-bye.